Today is Monday, January 7, 2019, and my friend Lindy is celebrating a birthday. I want to offer her a birthday greeting that I think she'll enjoy, and since I have it on good authority that the slow movement of Antonin Dvorak's G minor piano concerto is one of her favorite pieces in the world, I thought we'd have a look at it, Atheist Codger style. I don't think she'll mind if others watch this as well, since she understands how special music is to people who, like her, have the capacity to love it. Dvorak composed his only piano concerto during the fall of 1876, not long after the death of his second daughter during infancy. That devastating personal blow seems to have cast a shadow on all of the music that he wrote that year, and his sorrow is palpable in the concerto's second movement. In addition to this keen sense of loss, Dvorak had to endure scathing criticism of his new concerto, described unkindly by some as a concerto for a pianist with two right hands. The concerto never enjoyed much success during the composer's lifetime, and about a decade and a half after Dvorak's death, Willem Kurtz made a thoroughgoing revision of the work's solo part. This is the edition that is most often presented in performance nowadays, but there are champions of the original, and the recording I'm using in this video features one of them. Let me say a few words about the overall design of the second movement. The basic template is ABA, plus a fairly substantial coda. The movement begins and ends in D major, but its harmonic journey is in many respects an unusual one. The A portion of the movement features two themes, which I've treated as themes one and two, although they don't behave the way you'd expect such themes to behave in a sonotiform context. Theme one is a bucolic, somewhat melancholy D major melody for the horn, which is restated by the solo piano. Following a dependent transition, the piano introduces theme two, which is constructed as A, A, B, A, a fairly common thematic template. This compound theme begins in E minor, but ends in A minor, and some deeply affecting chromaticism nudges the music into D flat major for the reprise of theme one that will finish this first A section. Let me stress how remarkable that is. This exposition, as it might well be termed, ends a half step lower than where it started. The B section is much more agitated and certainly developmental in character, although this music is more like a psychological portrait than a symphonic development. Its overall tonal trajectory is from D-flat major to E minor, where it ends on a cadenza that prolongs the dominant chord of that key. The return to A is much different from the historical antecedents on which this movement's ground plan is based. There is only a little of theme two and it is brought back first in E minor. The remainder of this reprise section will focus on theme one, first represented in D major, but rewritten for B minor endings. Another developmental style section quickly reaches a peak for a fortissimo, marcatissimo, grandioso C-sharp minor statement of theme one, which after sidestepping into B flat minor, peters out into the final return of that theme again in D-flat major, as at the end of the earlier A section. This music soon slips its harmonic leash and begins to wander, finding its way back to D major for a coda of substance. This is not a thematic coda. It is instead more like an extemporaneous tonic prolonging flourish for soloist and orchestra, finding its way by several beautiful means to a quiet D major finish. In this recording, we'll hear pianist Skatislav Richter with the Bavarian State Radio Orchestra of Munich, led by Carlos Kleiber. The recording can be found on the EMI Classics label. <laughs> 